pastor's ready. He's already standing. Why don't you join him? <laughs> We're so glad you made it today. You braved the pollen and it came out. If you're joining online, welcome to Tree of Light in Lugerville, Texas. open up your spirit this morning, open up your mouth, begin to give thanks. We come with grateful hearts this morning. Come on, just tell him how thankful you are. You've got something to be thankful for. Come on, bless his name this morning. Open up, open up, let your river flow. From out of your mouth flows rivers of living water.
suddenly articulate with a thousand tongues lift one cry then from north to south and east to west we hear Christ be
be magnified from the altar of my life. Christ be magnified in me.
Father, we thank you this morning that you are our victory. That, Father, you are our defender. That you are the one, Father, that goes before us. And, Lord, you make crooked paths straight for us, Father. You are faithful to your word. Father, that your word will always go forth and perform everything that it says it will. And so, Father, we declare today in this place that, Father, where your word says that by your stripes we are healed, we claim today that, Father, we are healed because of the word of the Lord. Father, today we claim as we go forward downcast hearts that the word of the Lord says that the joy of the Lord is our strength and that you come and you lift and you heal and you bring up the weary, Father, because it's not by might but by you, Father. And so, Father, we declare today that our weariness, Father, is replaced with the joy of the Lord today. We thank you for that, Father. Your, your restoration, Father, is promised to us. And so, Father, we say today that we are restored according to your word. Father, that you heal us and you mold us and you make us and you create us, Father, in your restoration power. And we thank you for that today, Lord. You're a good God. You're a God that is for us and not against us. That, Father, the things that you begin in our lives, we know that you will complete. And we thank you, Father, that every morning your mercies are new in our lives, Father. You are a gracious and a kind God. And we thank you for that today, Lord. We thank you that you are the one that is the one who, Father, sets the captives free. And Father, we thank you that it is because of you setting us free that we can stand here today, Father, in all your power, in your glory, and with your anointing upon our lives. And we thank you for that. We bless you for that today. Father, I stand in agreement with each person in this place today. Father, that is believing for breakthroughs in their lives. Father, that are believing for provision, that are believing for healing. That, Father, I believe in you for that secret thing that they've shared with you, Father. Father, we stand in agreement with your word today that you will perform and do what your word says on our behalf. And we thank you in advance, Father, because we want to give you and display your glory here today. We love you and we bless your wonderful name. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. God's good, isn't he? He's a good God. He has good things towards us, and he wants to do great and mighty things on our behalf. And let's not forget that, you know. We sang about God is our victory today, and he is. He is our victory, and he is our portion, and he is faithful towards us. Amen. And he is good. He is a good, good God. This morning, I'm going to uh, share out of Ephesians, but it's actually the scripture that the Lord gave me for my husband. It's his birthday this week, and you know he gives everybody scriptures, right? So his birthday is coming up on the 16th, and this is a scripture that the Lord gave me for him at the beginning of this year, actually. And um, it was for, this, for him in this church and in his life. And I was thinking, Lord, what do I share today? And he put this back on my heart. And so I'm going to share this because um, it's in Ephesians. And it's Ephesians 1, verse 11. It says, in him we were also chosen. Okay, that's you too. We were chosen in him. Amen. Having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will in order that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be for the praise of his glory. It's a great scripture because it reminds me that he has chosen you. He has chosen me. He has chosen my husband and he has chosen us, and he has chosen us, and he has a plan for us. We need to be reminded of that. We're not just chosen. We're also planned in the visions of God. Amen? So we're chosen, and then we have a plan. And he says, who works out everything for his purpose. 
So God works everything in our lives together for his purpose. So he's first chosen us, then he has a plan for us, and then he says he's going to work out his purpose. Amen? Isn't that exciting? Of his will. So God does his will in our lives, not just ours, our good ideas, our good thinking, but the will of God is planned in our life. And then it says, in order that we who were the first to hope in Christ, we all hope in Christ, amen? That's part of our salvation. Our hope is in the Lord, that we might be the praise for his glory. I think that's an amazing scripture. There's everything in there that we need. And um, I, you know, and I just thank God for each of you out here today because that is for you that He has called you, He's chosen you, He has a plan for you, He has a purpose for you, you our hope is in Him, and that it's all to be the ones who can bring glory to God. Amen. So that is a good vision. That is a good hope for your life, a good thing to trust God. There is something, I mean, you can look through all the self-help books in the bookstores. What do you see books on? You know, that you are somebody special, that you have a purpose, you know, that what is your plan? Um, what, is, what do you have hope in? All those, all those headings and titles are in bookstores wherever you go. And God has it all in one scripture, just for you. Amen? He has that all together. And so I want to encourage you. And on behalf of my husband, I tell you what, if there's anybody I know that has a desire to do the purpose and the will of God, it is him. And everything he does, I tell you everything. We, make, we say things at home, what we want to do, where we want to go, what we want to say, how we want to act. And he always is the one who brings it around to, but God. Where is God in this? What is, I mean, he doesn't say it that spiritually, but where is God? How do, you know, he will just be like, well, I don't know about that. Or, you know, is that really how it should be? And this is really how it goes. And he'll always bring it back. And so I'm celebrating his birthday because I'm glad he was born. Amen. But not only, yes, amen. Not only that he was born, but that you were born too. Because guess what? We're all on the same team. Amen? We're all on the same team. We're all here because we're chosen. Amen? We are a chosen generation. We're all here because God has a plan and a purpose for your, la- for your life. If you don't, we need to help you get one. Amen? If you, and then he's called us that you have a plan and a purpose. You are here for a reason, not just by happen chance. Do you think that? No. He we're not here by happen chance. And then he has given us a hope that is beyond all hope and understanding. I don't know how anybody in this world enjoys life without the hope of the Lord Jesus Christ in their lives. I, I would not have any hope. But for the grace of God, amen. But because he has set us apart, he has chosen us. He has given us a plan. He has given us a purpose and a hope. All for his glory. Amen. All right, that's my little say, and I'm going to stick to it, right? Because I'm excited about that. I'm glad that God is for me and you today, amen? And we're on the same kingdom and the same team, serving him, set apart, purpose, hope, because we want to bring him glory ultimately, amen? All right, well, it's good to see everybody here today. I'm fired up. I don't know about you. I'm excited. I'm just excited that we get to serve God, a resurrected Savior, (laughs) amen, and he has resurrection power in our lives, and because he lives, guess what? We live, amen? We live, and it's exciting. Okay, Um, I'm glad you're here with me today. I hope you feel the same way, (laughs) but welcome to you and all those online today. We're glad you're with us, and... um, I wanted to highlight a few announcements today. Easter is coming up, Resurrection Sunday, next Sunday already. Can you believe it? And so right after service today, the um, youth and children are going to be practicing. The children are going to be up here with Miss Jediah, who's leading the choir this year with the kids. They will be here right after service, practicing two songs, and then parents, they're free to go. So they're not going to be here very long today, the children, 
right off to service with uh, Miss Jediah. Two songs they're going to practice, and then they can go on home. All right, the youth are going to stay a little longer, and so they're going to be practicing a song. I don't know what they're practicing. They're practicing something, and it's good. And um, they are going to be provided with pizza because they're going to be here maybe a little longer. So the youth are invited and to stay and practice with everybody here after um, service. So children, two songs home, youth stay a little longer, and lunch will be provided for the youth. All right. Then um, we have <coughs> Miss Susan is going to be staying after service this morning and decorating for um, some of our service for next Sunday. So if anybody wants to stay for a little bit and help her out, she would greatly appreciate that this morning just after service. If you have any questions, please just chat with her and see what she has in mind for all of that, okay? And then um, we have a newcomer's luncheon coming up April 24th. If you haven't attended one, here at the church, we want to invite you to join us for that on April the 24th. Right after service, we're going to have lunch together and just share some of the vision of the church, okay? And then um, this Wednesday night, the marriage series is continuing. We're going to be meeting at 6.45 for snacks, and then at 7, we're going to do the video and the it, the. Uh, GOE Discipleship Course will be meeting upstairs during that same time. So come and join them if you want. If you're not part of them, we don't, I don't want to go to the marriage seminar, whatever. There's always that class you can go sit in and listen and learn in Jack's class. He would like to have you up there. So, And then um, last but not least, we have our outreach coming up. Luke's going to come and explain a little th bit about that for next uh, Saturday. So let's uh, hear what Luke has for us. Pastor Cheryl, hello, all you beautiful people. Um, so it's this week. It's this weekend, the outreach out in Elgin. Um, pretty big. It's going to be a blast. We've got a lot of people coming, and we've got places for anybody, all types, all abilities. Um, so it's a large property, multiple different things to do, even if you just want to ride a lawnmower, a riding lawnmower and cart, recyclables to a trailer or trash to the dumpster. So um, the... Bonfire is already spoken for by Jesse. He's going to be running that, so thank you, Jesse. Um, so there's a sign-up sheet in here. If you miss that or you don't know what your schedule is going to be like, but you will know, say, Thursday, Friday, kind of last minute, that's okay. Tree of Life Church's uh, Facebook page, uh, wife put a link there that sends you the info. You click on the link, sends you an info. You take a little survey, which is what it looks like. It's kind of cool, and you're telling her who's coming, how many of y'all are coming? Do you want to ride? If you want to ride, we're meeting here at 8 in the morning on Saturday at the church. If you want to give a ride, you're meeting here at 8 in the morning on, and we'll leave at 8.15 promptly. If you just want to meet there, the address is there um, at 9. Uh, it'll let us know what kind of pizza you want. So we're going to do pizza for lunch. We'll have drinks out there. Um, feel free if you have special drinks, bring them. Um, we'll have a porta potty out there so we're not bothering their households or whatnot. Um, trailers for recyclables, dumpster for... For different cleanup stuff, a lot of uh, some weed eater work, maybe some tree trimming, um, picking up just trash. So the kids will be out there picking up like aluminum cans and bagging them. But like I said, there's something for everybody. Um, get with me or Joey. Joey's kind of managing all of this because she's better at all of that back there in the corner. Thank you, Joey. Her uh, survey looks really neat, um, very professional. Um, so yeah, get with either one of us um, and. Uh, Go to the Facebook page at church, and that will give you everything you need to know. It should be a lot of fun. That's this Saturday. Thank you, guys. Amen. Amen. Awesome. I'm excited about that. It's going to be fun. All right, if the ushers would like to hand out envelopes at this time, that would be awesome. And uh, we're going to let Pastor come up and do the offering and go from there. Thank you. All right, the uh, youth can be dismissed as well to go upstairs to the Pulse Youth Ministries. Uh, speaking about the youth, we have a very, very um, exciting event happening here. Uh, you know, the Bible, the number 50 is very, very uh, important. The day of Pentecost took, day, took place 50 days after the resurrection. Pente is the number five cost. And um, 50 years ago, in 1972, was the birth of the Jesus movement in America. All you guys that are baby boomers, remember that? You were hippies, you had long hair. You were full of flowers and free love and free whatever. And all of a sudden, Holy Spirit got a hold of you guys. You got saved. 
the charismatic movement got birthed in a big way, and churches began to explode all over the place. He had a, in Cotton Bowl in, in Dallas, Texas, they had Billy Graham come, they had Larry Norman, they had Resurrection Band, they had Honey Tree, they had Keith Green, they had all those guys we know about that are baby boomers, and an explosive power of God hit the place. Tens of thousands got saved, and they're going to repeat that in June 22nd this year. 50 years has gone by. The same man that did that 50 years ago, his last name was something like Eshelman or something. He also responsible, he birthed the Jesus film that went across to millions of people around the world, got millions saved. And we use that ourselves in Mexico and Guatemala, other countries as well, and even in Africa to get folks saved. Uh, he, he's going to correspond to all this. He's got a par powerful, anointed young evangelist man who is right now reaching um, millions of youth for the, for the gospel. He'll be also helping them out. And so if you can go to that event, it's free in the Cotton Bowl. I'm not sure if folks can be able to be held there. But let's also be praying, if you think about this, praying for our, you've been, we've been praying on a regular basis here that God would touch our youth with revival. They're becoming more and more of an unreached people group because we're blocking out God's name in so many ways in the avenues they go to. And so um, we're going to believe God for a great catalyst there, an explosion of God in Dallas in June, around 22nd here, Cotton Bowl. And we're going to see what takes place here. And we'll be praying for it in advance that a great harvest happens not just that week, but it just is a catalyst for future weeks and future days. Amen? I really believe that prophetically God's setting this thing up here as a blessing to our country and for our youth, okay? Um, also, there is uh, prayer again this Thursday night, even though Emma's not here. Those who come to Emma's meeting still come this Thursday. We'll be leading that, doing a little bit of teaching as well about spiritual warfare and spirit, whatever God lays in our heart to be uh, speaking about for prayer. It's been impressive here to have that many people come to this, these meetings upstairs. And we have got a great, tremendous prayer core in our church here. And I appreciate you guys being faithful in your prayers because prayers makes a huge difference. Also, the ushers, once we're not done with the offering, you guys can feel free to even pass that uh, clipboard around for newcomers' luncheon. That's, I believe it's very, very important. All folks would sign that who can come to that, learn more about the church. I went ahead and have our ushers come to the front and have you do that. There is one more important birthday I know about this week here that's uh, in the church today. His, his name is Albert Alexi. Back here yeah. behind that wood in the sound booth is Albert. Albert um, does far more than many of us realize. This guy works way beyond the hours of just church services here and does so many great things to help keep, keep our whole sound running. And God shows him things as well to do. You know, um, I'm not sure if it's, you've been serving now, what, for about three or four years in the sound booth, or has been even longer than that? Maybe six years. And uh, when, I, when he first began serving there, the Holy Spirit told me to approach him and say, would you consider working in the sound booth? And, uh, and, then, and then God just breathed on that. He was exactly the right person for that. And he's been a tremendous blessing to do that in so many ways here. He helps out in, in weddings, helps out in memorial services there, so many th great things. As I prayed about him this week, um, I received Hebrews chapter 6, verses 9 and 10 for Albert. It says, But beloved, we are confident of better things concerning you. Yes, things that accompany salvation. Though we speak in this manner, for God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love, which you have shown toward his name, in that you have also ministered to the saints, and you do keep on ministering. So God's going to keep on rewarding you. He's been rewarding you in, in ways you probably already know about, but God's going to keep on doing that this next year coming up here. Amen? So it's a blessed week to have a birthday. Then we have a shout out for folks we know about that are watching online. Um, people like Edis Cano, God bless you this birthday week for you. Uh, Sandra Bonet has moved off to Florida. God bless Sandra. And also, also Iris Shelley, those who know her, may get some things off to these folks here as far as cards, letters, gift cards, uh, cars, uh, things of that nature. Get those things to them this week. Amen? Trying to see if you're awake. Is anybody else having a birthday today or this week coming up? I might have missed anybody. I did research on my birthday years ago to see who was born on the same day I was born. And I'm proud to announce that um, two folks born on my birthday was Adolf Hitler and, <laughs> and Muttley of the, of the cartoon fame. Those who know about Muttley. So I got great blood, uh, great, great company. On my birthday, amen. As far as anniversaries go, this is also an online couple, very big blessing to our church named, Ron, named Don and Annie Gish. Yes. For those who know the Gishes, be sure, be sure to bless them, call them, text them, send them cards as well. Anybody else having a wedding anniversary this week? I might have missed anniversary folks. Let's really take some time right now to speak blessings upon all these folks as ushers come to the front. Now we're going to receive our tithes and offerings as well today. Thank you again for being faithful uh, in your tithes, in your offerings. 
Um, we, get, got, we got that keyboard into Greg's hands last week here that the church purchased. We're getting a new air conditioner unit put in uh, tomorrow. This, this one over here is broke in this area. Uh, even though you're still cooled down by the other ones to, uh, to a degree, it's going to be a whole lot better when it hits 100 degrees or 95 in a few weeks here as well. So that's happening this week. There's things going on on a regular basis as far as maintenance goes, but also we're giving more and more out in missions. We're giving more out to things right here in our own city to help out as well. And praise God for all you folks working on my birthday to help the folks in Elgin. You know, God's going to send rain this week. So whenever the Carlo, um, Jesse lights that bonfire up, there'll be no outside fire. Amen? Because God's going to quench the ground with rain uh, starting tomorrow in the Elgin area. So praise God for that as well, that God goes before them. So Father, let's just pray right now. Father, we do thank and praise you. As you bless, O oh God, those having birthdays you mentioned this week. That, O oh God, you bring forth your desires in them and through them. That you, O oh God, help their ears be anointed, God, to hear your voice more clearly. To see, O oh God, by the Spirit. And also, God, to do those things that bear lasting fruit. We right now pray for them divine protection, divine favor, anointing God to do your will. And may, Father God, their paths be drenched in the dew of heaven to bring great blessings to them that are so big they can't even contain that. We also pray blessing God upon Don and Annie Gish. Have the anniversary, God. Bless their marriage. Bless their walk together. Bless their life for those they're an example for. Use them, God, for your glory. Now, Father, for this offering today, we praise you, God, for the permission you give to America, to our city, God, to our state. We pray blessings, God, together right now upon the city of Austin. And we say, Father God, prosper our city more and more. Thank you, Lord, for bringing forth commerce, bringing forth business, O oh God. Help us not to grumble or complain too much about the growth, knowing, Father God, as you bless our city, you also bless us. And as you bless us, we will bless others. And we pray, God, that you would take and use what is sown this day, this week, in this church to bless others, God, even beyond the walls of this church. Rebuke the devourer for thy name's sake in our behalf. We, are, we right now declare that debt is broken off of us in Jesus' name. And we, Father God, are seeing ourselves receiving raises, bonuses, promotions, not because we're greedy, but because we want to be a greater blessing to folks around us. We, we have influence over. We thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you, ushers, waiting upon the people. We're having our church picnic in the middle of May, 15th of May. Put that on your calendar as well, and you'll enjoy that time. We're going to bring in the horses again if they're available, and we're going to bring in, um, we're going to bring in the, uh, take the painting thing and, the, and the, the bounce house with the water slide. And it'd be a water slide. And some good food and some shade. Amen. All those things are going to come together. And also we're going to bring in cotton candy or slush balls. One of the two. Uh, one, one of these or, or both. Something's going to come in there. No one's going to parachute in, but we're going to do other stuff beyond that. Amen. All right. If you have your Bibles, let's get in the, involved in the second. This is a three-part series here. It's called We Are the Temple of God. I hope you enjoyed last week's here about the body. Today is about renewing our soul. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. The first verse about that is found in 1 Corinthians 3, 16. And I said to you guys in review last week, the result of man falling back in the Garden of Eden 6,000 years ago into sin was because the soul resisted the authority of the spirit. Man went from being a spiritual being primarily to becoming a fleshly being. You know, if Adam and Eve had not sinned back in the Garden of Eden, they would be alive today. 6,000 years later. That's not possible in, that, in the natural realm, but the supernatural God said, I'm going to put in the garden a tree called the tree of life. Whenever you hear the word tree of life in the pulpit, always say, um, that's the church of our name, our, our church's name or something like that. So in the garden of Eden was a tree of life. And God says, as long as you eat of this tree of life, you will not die, but you will live. And so whenever they sinned, what did God do? God banished them out of the garden so they could not eat of the tree of life any longer. And Adam died at 960 years old. That's still a long age, amen? But it's not near as good as being 6,000 years old. As you can find after Noah's flood, man began to die in his 500s, in his 400s. And now as time has gone by, in the farm days of America back in the 1800s, the average lifespan was 42 years old. Now, because of medicine, technology, vitamin C, and Flintstone vitamins, we now can live to be 85 years old and sometimes plus that because of what's happening around us to bring health to our bodies. But still, 85 is a, is a ripe old age today. Um, so the spirit man is still eternal and still lives forever, but the body has been touched with a curse because of sin. 
And because the body was touched, also the soul was touched, because the soul is where the mind, the will, and the emotions is at. And the soul joins the body to the spirit. So when you come to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, a spirit man comes alive, and your spirit man is perfect. Can't be made more perfect. But your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions is being renewed by the washing of the water of the, of the word, little by little. And Exodus tells us that little by little you'll possess the land that's been taken and given to the enemy in times past. So 1 Corinthians 3.16 says this, Do you not know you are the temple of God and the Spirit of God dwells inside of you? Your spirit, is either, your soul is either controlled by your flesh or controlled by your spirit. Your mind, your will, your emotions is controlled either by the flesh, the body, or by the spirit. How many of us know the spirit of God coming inside of us can transform our minds, can transform our emotions, can transform our will to line up with God's mind, God's emotions, and God's will. Amen. Amen? That's why the Lord's Prayer says the first thing you say there is, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on this earth as your will is done also in heaven. I'm going to give you two more quotes this morning from the Spiritual Man book by Watchman Nee. On the screens, the first one here, Watchman Nee writes about what a renewed soul looks like. And so what does it say here? First of all, it says, no longer is there self-importance when there's a renewed soul. Either in public or in private, these believers recognize and admit their incompetency And they only wish to exalt the Lord with humbleness and of heart. They will not steal the Lord's glory any further, but magnify him in their souls. For if the Lord is not, if, if, if the Lord is not magnified in the soul, nowhere else is he also magnified either. This is what's talked about in this book called The Spiritual Man Watchman Nee. It should be our goal to have a soul that is in tune with our spirit more than in tune with our flesh. I want to give one more quote from Watchman Nee's book. This next one here says this. This prosperity, this talks about 3 John 2. This says, I would that your soul would prosper or your, 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 your body would prosper even as your soul prospers. And so it says, this prosperity in 3 John 2 originates not with what self has gained, but with what self has denied. A soul lost is not a life lost, for the soul is lost in God. Soul life is selfish and therefore binds us up. But the soul renounced shall abide in the boundlessness of God's life. This is liberty. This is prosperity. The more we lose, the more we gain. Our possessions are not measured by how much we receive, but by how much we give. How fruitful is this life? So God wants you to prosper and be blessed even as your soul does prosper. But prosperity, again, is not success in money and things. It's how much we give, not just how much we get. Amen? And the soul becomes a conduit of God's love and God's grace. But God wants our emotions, God wants our soul to become like His and like His nature is as well. A large part of our soul has got to do, again, with our emotions. So I'm not going to spend time this morning on the mind or on the will. I'm going to totally focus on your emotions. Getting our emotions lined up with the will of God, the nature of God, and God's character. Now, Webster's Dictionary defines your emotions as this. It says, our emotions are a complex state of feeling that results in physical and psychological changes that can influence our thoughts and our behavior. That's what our emotions are all about. And so I'm going to give you three truths to write these things down this morning. Please try to find something to write some things down. I'm going to give you guys some different points here under every one of these points I give you guys this morning. I have three take-home points, but in the take-home points, there are some other points under that to write some things down about your emotions. So the first truth about emotions is this. Number one, emotions don't have to rule us. We don't need to be ruled by our emotions. And I want to say again, because of the present state of our nation around the world as well, by folks getting locked up for months and years, and folks are acting a little bit stranger around us than they used to, people's emotions are kind of going off the chart in some realms in negative type of ways. We as a body of Christ should be an example of a balanced emotional person and not imbalanced. Now society tells us that our emotions do rule us, but God's word does not say that. They say that I am what I feel. This is only true if you allow it to be true, that I am what I feel. 
We don't live by our feelings. We don't live by our emotions. The just, the Bible says, will live not by sight, but by faith. And so we don't go by feelings and by emotions, even though God does bring feelings, God does bring emotions, but God brings those things in a balanced way, life-giving way, and not a death-producing way. A balance between two people is what God wants today to me to get across to you folks, and that is two science fiction characters. You guys that are baby boomers know about Star Trek. They had a guy on Star Trek named Spock. Spock had the pointy ears. Spock had no emotions. He was a Vulcan. He went totally by logic. How many folks realize that Spock had no friends? <laughs> Nobody wants to be around anybody that's like Spock. Got no emotions. They're just neutral all the time. Not smiling, not laughing, not sad, not crying, not emotional. And we don't need Spock. The other extreme is found in the Avengers, the character named Hulk. Hulk, his emotions off the chart. He could not control his emotions. How many folks realize that Hulk, when he was Hulk, also had no friends? <laughs> if you got around Hulk, you might get beat up. Because that guy could not control his anger or his emotions. God wants a balance between Spock and Hulk brought to us by the power of the Holy Spirit that God can bring as only he can bring. One way we bring our emotions under control is by understanding that they do have a purpose in our lives. God gave us emotions for a purpose and for a reason. They've got a power, the Bible says. And we can benefit from the power that God gave us by our emotions. We don't have to have, have to be at the mercy of our emotions at the same time. Now, the Bible says in the book of James, it says the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous avails much. That word fervent is a word for emotions. God wants your prayers fervent. And it says the effectual fervent prayer of the, of the righteous avails much. So there's power in your emotions. There's power in fervency. Amen. Not all emotions are bad. Emotions are good, but they can become bad. So the second point, number two, is this. There are myths about emotions. There's myths. There's, false, there's falseness. There's lies about emotions. The first myth is this. Having strong feelings means that you're, not, you're out of control. Having strong feelings means you're out of control. How many folks know you really can feel deeply and not really be out of control? You know, Jesus Christ was so sad by the death of Lazarus, it says he was deeply moved by, the, by what he heard by Martha, Mary, and folks around him, that he began to weep and cry himself, being deeply moved by the death of Lazarus. It's the actions that come from the emotions that make us feel out of control. Your emotions don't, don't, can get out of control sometimes, but it's the actions after the emotions come, that's what gets out of control, and that's what gets you in trouble by your mouth, by your hands, by your attitude, by your actions, when the emotions come. You can feel angry and then begin to lash out at others because of your anger in a negative realm. Back when I was only about a 10 or 11-year-old boy in Wichita, Kansas, I loved playing touch football. And so we had, a whole, we had about 25 kids in my neighborhood growing up. Very, very fun summers. We played kick, kickball, kick base, soccer, softball, all kind of stuff. One time we challenged the girls to touch football in my best friend's front yard, had a big front yard. And so they put their little um, flags on their sides. We put the flags on our side. Now I want to say, first of all, off the bat, the girls were older than we were. They were bigger than we were. I was the biggest boy on the boys' side. And the girls beat us. I'm not a very good sport, especially back when I, before I get saved and spirit filled. And my, step, my future stepsister was there, gloating, bragging, laughing in my face about how the girls beat the boys as they walked all home together toward my house with my sister and her. I got so ticked off and angry with my stepsister, I began to blurt out every secret my sister had told about her behind her back <laughs> in a negative way. I thought, you think, that's, you think you're going to make me feel bad? I want to make you feel bad. And I began to lash out at her and just unload there. And praise God, somehow they still stayed friends, at least for a season there. And um, I, didn't, I, didn't do, I didn't do lasting damage as far as I know there. But we can sometimes do things to lash out because of anger or out of control emotions that we sometimes regret later what we did. Amen? I saw a bumper sticker here in Austin about a year ago that I would, I would repeat myself, but I'm a pastor and Christian. You can't do that. can't put bumper stickers on my car that says things like this. But it said there, the closer you get, the slower I go. 
Folks that hate tailgaters and folks that hate people that get on your rear when you're driving need that bumper sticker. Amen. The, the closer you get, the slower I go. That's a person who's fed up with bad drivers around them and they want to lash out in their flesh and somehow get even or get results in some kind of a way like this. Secondly, second myth is this. It is wrong to change your emotions. It's wrong to change your emotions. Many folks in the secular world believe that's true. Don't ever try to change anybody's emotions. Their emotions are who they are and what they are. Don't try to change that. Well, Galatians actually denies that because Galatians says you can be filled with the Holy Spirit and change negative emotions in your life. Your soul man really can get saved and really can get renewed by the power of God. So Galatians chapter 5, starting in verse 18, talks about First of all, the sins of the body, then the sins of the spirit, and then the sins of the soul in, in a short way. It says this, but if you are led by the spirit, you are no longer under the law, under the flesh, under what the body, because the law was all about what the body could do to make God happy. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are these? These are all bodily things, adultery, fornication, uncleanness and licentiousness. Licentiousness means lewdness, being lewd. Those are all things you do in your body. Then the spiritual realm is these two things, idolatry and sorcery. When you get involved in witchcraft, bowing down to idols, serving false gods, your spirit man gets involved and it, it corrupts your spirit man in that realm. Then it goes on to the fleshly realm, the bodily, I mean the, the soulish realm is next. Emotional realm as well. Hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy. Those who practice these things, it says, will not inherit the kingdom of God. So if God says these negative emotions that are here, like outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, so forth, if those are negative, how many folks would agree we don't need those in our life anymore? Amen. So changing our emotions is, always, is not always bad if these things rule your life and rule your, your, your actions in your life. They can be changed by the power of the Holy Spirit because we are under the Spirit and we are temples of God and God lives in us. We really can control our emotions with God's help in negative realms. This gives us a list of, 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 of emotions that we need to change in our lives. One thing we also need more of in this hour is a, is a strong word called repentance. There's going to come a point in a time where the church of God and, in America and around the world gets involved more and more in a thing called repentance. Repentance means you change your mind. It means you were going this way, you're now going the other way. It means you thought this way, you're now thinking the spirit right way. You were going by the flesh, you're now going by the spirit. It means you go from bad to good and from good even into a thing called better in your life. That's what repentance is all about. When you repent, you trade your, your um, power for God's power and God's grace then comes in you that you might have power over the thing you're repenting of in your life. Because when you repent, you're saying, God, this thing's too big for me. This thing has conquered me. This thing is in me. I need your power inside of my life to conquer this thing on an ongoing basis. And repentance actually gives you God's grace. Amen. It gives you God's power to overcome sinful things, including negative emotions in your life as well. Everybody in this room here has got a temper. I've got a temper. Cheryl's got a temper. We all got a temper. Is that true? Yeah. We've all got a temper. Amen. But the fact is this, some tempers have capped themselves at this level and some have capped themselves at this level. And those who've capped themselves at this level need to get their minds renewed by the washing of the water of the word. Because you're not to be controlled by a bad temper and by an uncontrolled temper. You're to have a tempered temper, tempered by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? All of us have got these kind of tempers that take place. Sometimes your emotions are based on the, or the third thing is this, number three. My emotions are, the, are 100% absolute truth. I believe my emotions are 100% absolute truth. Whatever I feel, that is truth. And that is true. That, that is normal. That's not right. It's a myth. Sometimes your emotions are based on the interpretation of an event. You realize that? Your emotions sometimes are based on the interpretation of an event you're in in your life. How many here have ever gotten themselves excited about something that you thought was one thing, 
But it turned out to be something totally different. We all can say yes to that. Amen. I was in Malawi, Africa over 10 years ago doing a frontline shepherd conference in that country for about two weeks doing two of those. Very impoverished nation right above South Africa. And um, they were having elections at this week in that country. In fact, that day it was happening. And so a certain man who, very normal, promised him all kinds of money and raises and prosperity, he won the election that day. And I was sitting there in the car waiting for my, my, my host to go to the bank and pull money out for the, for the conference. As I sat there, I saw a young man running up and down the street in front of my car, up and down with wads of ca- Malawian cash in his hand and say, we won, we won, we're rich. But the fact is, he had no more money in the bank the next day than he had that day. That guy winning the election didn't get him one penny in his pocket. And I went back to Malawi a year, two years later, and they were no more better off then than they had been before the election even took place. Sometimes our emotions take over and we get excited by the things we're promised or things we see around us that aren't always really true. They're smoke and mirrors. And so God says, don't let your, your, your whole life be ruled by what you see and by your sight and by your emotions. Find out what God says about a matter and line up your emotions hopefully with what God's saying to us in situations. Just because we feel something does not mean it is true. I've had folks that come into church service, you know, Shirley, I told you guys uh, time and time again, or different times in the past, our church in Kansas we had there, one young lady there full of rejection was on the, toward the back row of the church. And she said, Sunday after Sunday, she said, I know that sister, sister Cheryl hates me because whenever she says anything negative from the pulpit, she always looks right at me. She's looking right at me. You know, I'm looking right at Jack right now. <laughs> Cheryl did not hate that young lady. He, she, she simply was trying to think in her brain, what am I saying? How am I getting this thing across right? She wasn't looking at anybody in particular there, but she took that as, I feel like the pastor's wife rejects me and hates me and got offended by that. You can't always go by your feelings and by your emotions. You're sometimes perceiving things and seeing things through the eyes of rejection, through the glasses of distortion sometimes. Number four is this. Fourthly, some emotions are foolish or stupid. That's a myth. Some emotions are foolish or they're stupid. The truth is something is triggering that emotion in you. Could have been triggered by past hurts, by shame in the past, by loss, by something traumatic that you experienced in life. I know to this very day in my life, if I hear that song that comes on by Lindsey Buckingham, that's called Holiday Road, that was on the Ford commercials back in the 19, um, or back in the year 2007, when I, I had my daughter Sarah here in the hospital in intensive care, they played that on the TV again and again and again for Ford commercials, Holiday Road by Lindsey Buckingham. If that song comes on today, I start cringing in my, in my own soul. I start just tensing up. I start getting nervous. I almost want to start sweating. It takes me right back to the place of all that tension we went through in the intensive care unit for those 45 days hearing Holiday Road. On the flip side, I can hear sometimes some spiritual songs that I heard back when I got revived. I got filled with the Holy Spirit back in the 80s or my, or my CF&I days at Bible school and so forth. And all of a sudden I can have tears come to my eyes. I can, have, I can think of memories of how God touched my life, how God transformed my life. So you see, even songs sometimes trigger old emotions, good or bad. Sometimes you see things that do the same thing. We invalidate ourselves when we invalidate the emotions inside of our lives. Much of our success in life depends on how we see ourselves. We should teach our children, think little about how others perceive you. Think about how you perceive yourself. Teach your kids, teach your grandkids. Don't worry about what folks think you are, what they think you are or are not. You need to know who you are yourself in Jesus name, because how God sees you and how you see you, that's what matters in life more than how man sees you and how people see you. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse seven verifies this. It says, as a man thinks in his own heart, so is he. And when folks tell you day after day that you're inferior, you're stupid, you're dumb, you're ugly, you're this, you're that, you start believing that, especially as a young person growing up in a public school. And I'm saying, we have got to teach our kids, don't believe what the press says around you in negative realms. Believe what God says and believe that God's not finished and God's going to have the, the, the final say in your life. The fifth thing here is this. 
It is good for me to bury my emotions. That's also a myth. Burying my emotions, what's that do? That brings on depression. That brings on frustration. And that brings on even numbness of your soul. So you become like Spock in life. You become a rock. You become uh, soulless. You become emotionless. And that's not what God wants in your life. We need to recognize our emotions to process and feel the emotion from a true perspective and look at the emotion through the lens of truth. Amen? The Bible says, for the joy set before Jesus, joy is an emotion, he endured the cross. You see, the truth was, Jesus Christ knew right now I'm going through pain, suffering, and shame. But the truth is, God the Father has given me a joy, a vision of what takes place beyond the cross. I will rise from the dead. I'll be king of kings and lord of lords, and there shall come hundreds of millions into my kingdom because I'm doing this today upon this cross. And for the joy set before me, I can endure the cross. You see, emotions have power. Emotions can bring faith. Emotions can bring good things your way if they're there because they're true, not because they're a myth or false. I myself conquered fear in 1978 getting baptized in the Holy Spirit. I was 20 years old. I told you guys I had a fear of big dogs. I had a fear of werewolves and vampires. I did not look forward to going to bed at night in my bedroom because I knew when I went to bed, I'd be laying there. And I kid you not, there were, there were demonic spirits trying, I mean, they might have saw what I was going to do in the future or something. They'd be outside my window. I was on the second floor of a house and the cats were, me, were doing that gurgling, fighting, weird noise cats make when they're trying to mate or fight or something. And I'd hear them saying my name. Now, isn't that, you're going to have a little problem up here with fear. The cats are saying my name in their little gurgling, fighting, weird little way. I knew when I went to bed at night and fell asleep, I'd probably have nightmares about vampires, werewolves, or elephants attacking their house or something there. I hated going to sleep. I got baptized in the Holy Spirit at age 20. Just like that, all the dreams went away. All the fear was gone. I fell in love with God for the first time in a real way. I fell in love with people at the same time. And all of a sudden, perfect love cast down all fear. And I had no more fear of the dark, no more fear of my room, no more fear of going to bed at night, no more fear, a little bit of fear of big dogs, but no more fear of werewolves, vampires, things out there, and no more cats outside my window making weird noises. God bound their mouths and God got them out of the place. Amen. Cats have problems. And I want to say today, I still feel fear from time to time, like you and I, you all do the same thing, but I don't let fear rule over me. I, can, I get fearful sometimes when bad things take place around me, but I don't let it rule my life. I don't deny that fear exists. I deny its power to rule over me is what I do. Amen. And so praise God, you can have emotions sometimes that are negative for a little season there, but don't let them rule over you. Recognize them, rebuke them and say, I will not let this identify me any longer in my life with God's help. Yes. Third point today. There also, there are truths about emotions. There's myths about emotions. There's also truths about emotions. First thing in this realm, let's write this down. Emotions can motivate us to help others in need. That's one good thing about emotions. It motivates us to help other people in need. You know, right now, Luke and Jesse, Jack, and all the men, women going out there to Elgin this coming, uh, this coming uh, Saturday, they're motivated there because they love people. They've got compassion for people. They love to help widows in their distress. God's word says to do that. Emotions can motivate us to help others in need. Jesus was moved by compassion at the death of Lazarus, but also he did healings. He said he saw the crowds, had compassion for them, and laid hands upon them and healed every one of them because he loved them and had compassion for them. How many folks know that today is Palm Sunday? Palm Sunday was a great victorious day for Jesus Christ. It should have happened a long time ago, before he, that, that day. But I folks also realized that that was a day of emotions. They were throwing down palm branches, worshiping him, praising him, King of kings, Lord of lords, Hosanna. And we all know the story. We've all seen Easter productions done 500 times. In seven days, same crowd, crucify him, kill him, not worthy to live, scum of the earth. Because people got a hold of their minds, got a hold because their emotions got into their uh, other folks' emotions, and they all began to work together to kill the King of Kings and the Son of God. Would we care about the less fortunate if we bottled up our emotions? The answer probably is no. 
We need godly emotions to have compassion for people around us in need. Secondly, you also, you are more than your emotions. Amen? You are more than your emotions. Your emotions are one part of part of you. Your soul's got mind and will and emotions. And your soul is one third of your being. Okay? So it's one part of one part of you. So you are more than your emotions. Number three, thirdly, write this down. Our emotions come from God. Your emotions you have come from God. How do I know that? Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. God made man in his image and his likeness. God's got emotions. God laughs. God cries. God, God sometimes feels pain. God senses, has empathy for us. God has emotions himself, emotions in line. You know, um, in, our, in our church here, one of our um, church members got, built, got filled with the Holy Spirit a couple of weeks ago, told us in the prayer room uh, two weeks back, she said, I was in my house by myself in my, in my room, and I was praying to God. I said, God, I want to be baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit, even speak in new tongues. And she began to pray for that and cry for that, and all of a sudden the Spirit of God came down in her room at her house and filled her with the Holy Spirit. And she began to speak in new tongues, new languages. To her amazement, all of a sudden, her little four or five-year-old little girl daughter came running in the room, laughing and dancing and shouting and doing twirls, and all the kinds of joy was in her little girl's heart. You see, the Holy Spirit's got emotion. The Holy Spirit laughs, dances, celebrates, is exuberant. Amen? And so the Holy Spirit is what God himself is like. Our emotions come from the Lord. It's our job to regulate and control our emotions with the help of the Holy Spirit. Our emotions help us make decisions to deal with people, to work our way through life. They motivate us even unto action. Amen? I'm going to owe Sarah $5. But Sarah, this is a good story. I, think it's, I, think it's, I thought it was good. Uh, her, her, her brother, who's 10 years older than her, about what, about 15 years old, she's about five years old, six years old, loves to tease people. She, he would take her Barbie dolls and tie a, a noose around their necks on the second floor of our house, gets open there in our house, and, and lunge them over, the, over, over the, in the living room when he's watching television. Here she comes Barbie down, hanging on a rope, <laughs> dangling there, being hung by the big brother. He'd do things like that. He would do ways to tease them. This is unimaginable. He had a great imagination. Well, Sarah is, is more black and white than Kristen is. Kristen's a peacemaker. She's mercy motivated there. She'll let you, sometimes you all kind of junk to her and get by with that. Sarah's not wired like that. Sarah's getting sick of it. Sarah waits till Daniel goes to sleep one day, jumps on his back, grabs his hair, a big thick hair, and pulls her, his hair with all of her might, screaming at him. He wakes up in severe pain and agony, arching his back in pain. I don't know if there's any handfuls of hair was in your hands or not, but she taught him a lesson, and he quit teasing her from that day on in our house. All the teasing goes all to Kristen and the dog and no longer Sarah. I'm saying sometimes our emotions pay off. Amen? Sometimes good things happen because I think it was a good thing that day. I wouldn't have her do it again. She gets spanked the next time. But um, I'm saying that that time it worked. And that young man changed his behavior real fast. Okay, one more thing before Greg comes to the front. One last thing about, you can, you, uh, there are mo- truths about emotions. There are people who cannot control their emotions, but they want everybody around them to control their emotions while they can't control their emotions. I want to say it again. There are folks that cannot control their emotions, but they want folks around them to control their emotions while they themselves can't control their emotions. Have you seen that? God wants us to grow up and not be like that. Amen? Realize who we're with, who we're around, and control our emotions with God's help and God's strength. As we're closing now, we're going to pray in a moment. We're going to pray about God giving us His strength, His help, His grace. If our emotions are out of control, may God give His peace to us in this hour, in this season. Negative feelings like rejection, inferiority, insecurity, depression, They've all got potential to overwhelm us and bring bad things into our lives, even controlling us. We don't have to be emotionally out of control. We don't have to suffer any longer. We can be filled with the Holy Spirit. 
The Holy Spirit really can quench and, and put and subdue wrong emotions to try to bubble over and bring wrong actions into our life. You're going to become angry. God says you can become angry, but sin not. You can become depressed, but don't let depression rule your life. Say, Father God, I am depressed. I need your joy, your strength, your help in my life. And God will start rece- releasing, I believe, things to you to break depression off your life. You can't become in, in, involved in self-pity, insecurity, inferiority. Start knowing what God sees you like, what God says about you. And then say that also about yourself. See yourself the way God does. The enemy is going to always try to shift you, your life away from God and away from God's people. And he'll do that by your mind, your will, and your emotions. Your mind is a primary battleground of Satan. He came to Eve in the first sin. Did God really say? Questioning what God had said to Adam and to Eve in her mind. Made her reason out. Well, if God was really a good God, he would not withhold this fruit from me, that I might know good from evil. She didn't realize the whole story, the whole picture. God didn't reveal that to her. Well, heads are bowed and eyes are closed in this place today. And folks are watching online as well today on Palm Sunday. I want to see a shift take place where we're going to be a people who will not be ruled by our emotions. In these last days, we're going to go through a flip. For it's not like Jesus coming through the the gates right now when when we're bowing down to him with all of our palm branches. It's more like right now, the enemy's at our gates. And he's trying to get accolades and trying to get attention and trying to get things to come into his kingdom, into his realm, into his, his way of thinking to capture the minds of people. And he's being very successful in doing that in many ways. And that's why in this hour, this season, the church of Jesus Christ on Palm Sunday needs to once again revisit the wells of saying, Father God, I worship you and I praise you and I serve you not because of my feelings or my emotions or my circumstances, but because I know who you are. I know how good you are. I know how great you are. I know how kind you are. I know how you're true. I know how you are the only way, the only life upon this earth. I know, God, you're worthy of praise. You're worthy of worship. You're worthy of adoration. I know, Father God, who you are today, yesterday, and also forevermore in the future. I want to spend my life with you. I don't serve you, God, because of my feelings, my emotions, what you do or do not do for me. I live by faith. An invisible God does visible things in my life. I give you praise and worship God this Palm Sunday because I love you. I know you. I want to be with you. I want to be near you. I desire your company. I'm so glad you call me the temple of the Holy Spirit. You call me a son and daughter of God. You call me the redeemed of the Lord. You call me precious in your sight. You call me the apple of your eye. You are the alpha and you are also the omega. What you began, O God, in me you shall complete by your power and by your spirit. God wants you to prosper and be in health, even as your soul does prosper. How many folks that are here today know who you are? That you're saying, I've even seen people and I myself may even be going through some bad health because of a lack of controlling emotions. Emotions out of control can affect your health. It can affect your your mind. It It can affect your very being. So, Father, right now, we're praying for ourselves. Oh, God, help us, Lord, see control come in my life over anger, over depression, God, over insecurity, over fear, over everything, God, that tries to vex my life and bring torment to me that is a negative emotion. I say it's bigger than I am, perhaps, but not bigger than God. And God, you live inside of me. Your word, oh, God, is also a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And I say, God, reveal your word to me. Bring, O oh God, scriptures in my life as I read your word. Meditate upon your word. Bring, Father God, also to me revelation. And I say, O oh God, bring to each one of us an ability to say, Lord, I need to be baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit gives me power over my emotions, my negative emotions. On the flip side, I say, Father God, those that are like Spock, who become numb, who become lifeless in their emotions and their soul, I say, God, revive them. Quicken their mortal bodies. Quicken, God. Bring forth, God, a a battery charger back to them. Go, God, jump, charge them in the name of Jesus and wake them up. 
out of slumber and sleep, apathy, passivity, selfishness, things of God that make them numb to the things of the Spirit. I say, God, wake them up. Wake us up, Lord. Let the church arise. Let the church awaken. Let the church, oh God, be those who feel, who cry, who mourn, who weep, who laugh, who dance, who celebrate. And say, Jesus Christ is Lord of all. And I want to see him in the lives of every person I know upon this earth. I want Austin to be saved. I want America to be saved. I want the world to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I want workers to be sent out. I want revival to come. I want a softening of hearts, O oh God, to happen. I want hardness, O oh God, to be removed. I want stones, O oh God, to be broken, broken up and fallow ground to come, O oh God. Fallow ground be broken and soft ground would come. Father, I want what you want. I want a saturation, God, of your spirit. I want the rain of heaven. I want the outpouring, God, of your love and grace upon the peoples of your kingdom upon this earth in this hour of this season. Let it be, O oh God, by your power and by your spirit. I hear the Holy Spirit saying one more thing. I want people that are here today that have had wounds take place. That When you hear certain songs, you see certain sights, you hear certain sounds, it just brings a super negative response in your soul. Just give that right now to God and say, Lord, I give this wound to you right now. I lay this wound at your feet right now in the name of Jesus from my war days. From the battles of my family days, from my rejection days, from my sickness days, from my car crash days, I lay all these wounds at your feet in the name of Jesus. And I say, Lord, take this wound, O oh God, from me. Close the gaps. Close the wound. Heal the wound, O oh God, by your spirit in the name of Jesus. Right now, lay it at God's feet. Lay it at God's feet. Say, Lord, it's longer my wound. No longer my trauma, no longer my experience. It's yours, God. It's yours, God, from this day forth in Jesus' name. If the enemy ever tries to torment me again with this thing, I remind him it's been dealt with by the power of God, by the blood of Jesus, and it will torment me no longer in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So stand to our feet, please. We have our prayer partners come to the front. God bless you. Did you uh, receive anything good, good today at all? Glad you came to church. Glad you're here. Praise God. I believe there's a washing of the water of the word that takes place when we share God's word together. My prayer always is, God, go behind me. Take the things I speak here and let your voice go beyond my voice and do what I cannot do. Amen. The prayer partners that are here today are here to pray prayers of agreement. And so if you have any kind of a need in your life at all, whether it be financial, whether it be physical, marital relationships, someone you want to pray for or not here today, Please go ahead and come to the front sometime before you leave this place this morning. Let's just ask God to just bring healing, God to bring deliverance, and God to bring forth the thing He wants to bring forth for life in your life as well. I'm going to have, have Earl Moon come to the front, if you don't mind, Earl, and let him dismiss us in prayer this morning. Some of our great veterans here. And I, think, I think it's Vietnam War. And this guy's a, a great man of God as well. We're praying for his son. Let's just keep on praying for his son's name is Michael Moon. He asked us to pray as a church. His, he had a tremendous car crash like Tiger Woods had, but he had even worse injuries than Tiger Woods in his feet and his legs. The doctor said he would never walk, and he's walking today. But today he's also going through a little bit of infection has been happening this week here. Let's pray that that goes away as a church this whole week. God would heal him, raise him up to life, and God, is bring, God completes what God began by His Spirit. Amen. We'll let Earl just lead us in prayer and, and dismiss us too. Father, every day we wake up is a great day in you, Lord. We walk to serve you, Lord. We ask your blessing upon all of our lives, Father. And Lord, it's been 52 years since I came back from Vietnam. And Lord, I've given that all to you, Lord. And Lord, I pray for all the other vets that goes through what I've been through, Lord, that you help take it away from them, Lord. And Lord, we just put it all in your hands, the trauma that we've all been through, just going through life and we give it all to you lord and we thank you for taking away from us lord and give us victory over it in jesus name amen